In this video, we're gonna weave a simple holly berry mini woven wall hanging. So let's get started. For this piece, I'm going to be using our recycled acrylic mini loom. I'm warping on a single warp onto this loom with four eight cotton warp string. A single warp just means you're putting one string between each of the notches. I warped on a total of 16 warp strings and then I got to work starting to weave. I used a little piece of cardstock. This one is about two and a half inches wide and I wove that in using plain weave so I have something solid to beat down onto. Then I took some super bulky yarn and I wove in a twining stitch followed by a couple rows of plain weave. Then it was time for my fringe. I'm using five millimeter recycled cotton string for this. So I cut pieces of this a little bit longer than I thought I might even want at the end, but I wanted to give myself some options once the piece was finished. I used a simple Raya knot to tie one strand of the fringe string around two warp strings at once. So a total of eight fringe strings. I used that same five millimeter cotton string for the weft of this piece. I grabbed a nice long piece so that I could do plain weave all the way up without having to start and stop. Once I was getting close to the top of this piece, I grabbed this little tree branch pencil that I have. I want to use this for the top of my piece. So what I did was grab just a strand of the string off of my warp string spool to create a simple lark's head knot to see how much length I would need to leave so that I could use this little branch at the top of my piece. One thing I will note, when you're using a string versus a yarn to do your weft, you probably will have to spend some time on the edges untwisting the yarn so it lays around that edge a little bit nicer. At the very top, I switched to three millimeter cotton string to do a twining stitch, just so it wouldn't be quite as bulky, but it would still keep everything in place at the top. I flipped the loom over and tucked in all the ends so that we can get started with the fun part. Now we're on to the fun part where we're gonna make leaves and little holly berries. We're gonna start with the leaves because I am obsessed with these little cotton string leaves I've been making lately. This time though, we're using three millimeter cotton string because this particular color, I just didn't have thicker string. So I thought this would be a great time to show you that you could use a thinner string by using multiple strands of it to make it thicker. And another thing that I need is a thin string to tie each of the leaves together. Now I like to use something really thin for this and I happen to have some green just embroidery thread that blends in nicely with my cotton string. So I'm gonna use that to tie my leaves together. These leaves are gonna be quite small because our entire piece is quite small but I'm gonna start them out a little bit longer and then we can trim them down from there because it's gonna be easier to start bigger and then make them smaller after that. I'm cutting three total strands to make my leaves and then I wanna have a nice long piece of this embroidery thread to tie around just so it's easier to handle and you're not trying to tie a knot with a really short string. Now one advantage to leaving these a little bit long is we don't have to tie this super close to the top so what I wanna do here is tie this really nice and tight. We don't want there to be any way this comes loose. So I'm just going to tie this really tight and then I'm gonna put my finger down onto this while I tie the other half of the knot so that it doesn't come loose. Then we can go ahead and trim these down. I like to leave little tails just so that there's no chance of it slipping out of that knot. So now that we have those strands together, I'm going to take this rope brush and I'm grabbing a piece of just cardstock, just paper in general. These little bristles on the brush are quite sharp. So sometimes it's a good idea, depending on your table, if it's a really rough table, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I wanna protect my table. So I'm using a piece of cardstock to brush onto so that I don't scratch it. So and then once we brush this all out, you can see that it just becomes one strand, which is exactly what we want. Based on the way that we're doing these leaves, they're not going to be exactly a holly leaf shape, but I do wanna get them to as much of that shape as I can. I'm going to now trim some of this top off because we don't want this to be super bulky up here when we go to attach it to the weaving. And now I need to trim this down till it's about the size and shape that we want. So I'm going to just sort of start trimming it down. I'm starting with the length. So I'm gonna trim some off and that's looking like it'll be a little bit better of a length, but we can always trim it shorter. So I'm starting with the middle 
and I'm gonna cut quite a steep angle and I'm just gonna try to curve that a little bit. So we have a little bit of that taper on one half and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the, the nature of this type of leaf is it's never going to be perfect. I kind of like that about it. It gives it a more organic feel and it helps my perfectionist brain, you know, just realize that like, it's just not going to be perfect. So let's lay this on our piece. I'm gonna make a couple more of those and then we'll move on to the berries. My holly leaf shapes are not working out the way that I hoped that they would. So I'm gonna opt for making these more of just a typical leaf shape. So I'm just gonna round them off a little bit. With this style of leaf, it just looks better. So I'm gonna go for that instead. Sometimes you try things and they don't quite work out the way that you hoped that they would. But honestly, I love the way these leaves look just as a regular leaf sheet shape anyway. So I'm happy with doing it this way. All right, I have three leaves. And once we have the berries, we'll figure out the placement for all of this. So we're gonna move on to the berries. We're actually going to be making mini pom-poms out of wool, which is something I discovered recently that I absolutely love. And again, I'm going to grab some embroidery thread that is a similar color to my wool. So to make a pom-pom out of wool, it's actually quite simple. The shaping can be a little bit tricky, but the actual making up is quite easy. So if you've ever made a pom-pom before, they're basically a lot of yarn wrapped around something and then tied in the middle and cut into shape. But for the wool that we're gonna use, I'm actually taking a couple tufts of merino wool roving. I'm going to do a total of three. Now these are really quite long and I think I will actually cut them in half so we can get two pom-poms out of this. And I'm gonna add one more strand, which again, I will cut in half. I'm going to flip these so that the thin end is going two of the strands, the thin end's going this way, and the other two, the thin end's going the other way, just so they're more even. Then I'm grabbing a nice long strand of my embroidery thread, and I'm going to tie this around the little bundle really tight just like we did for the leaves. And then I'm going to grab a hold of the embroidery thread and I'm gonna fluff this out and then we have to start trimming. Now, this is a lot longer than I needed, but it's a little bit difficult to make it much smaller to start with. Now for mine, since I'm going to be attaching them to a weaving, I'm not worried about the bottom being a little bit more on the flat side, so I'm just gonna have this as the base of the, the little pom-pom. So I'm just trimming from that direction, really. I'm not trying to make it perfectly round all the way around. You can absolutely use pre-made pom-poms for this as well, but if you want a very specific color and you like the idea of more of a wool one, you can do it this way. You can definitely use scraps of wool to make these as well if you don't wanna pull off of a longer strand. So we can bring our little piece over and just kind of see if that's gonna be a good size. It's a little bit big, but I kind of like it. So we have one little pom-pom. I'm gonna leave those strings nice and long there. And for this next one, since I did have to cut off quite a lot, I'm wondering if we can make two out of one bundle. So if I tie one embroidery thread near this end and another one near this end, we should be able to get two. So I have two strands on here. Now it kind of looks like a little wrapped candy, which is also really cute. And I'm gonna cut this down the center and then hold on to the strands just like I did before. Floof it out. And I think that's a more efficient way to use the wool for sure. Now I'm going to heat up my hot glue gun let that heat up and I'm also gonna go cut this little pencil situation that I have for the top of the weaving. So what I'm doing now is just refining my leaves a little bit more. 
because now that I see it all laid out, I'm realizing that the ends needed to be a little bit shorter and I just wanted to do one last trim of the leaves to make sure that they were the shape that I want. And then they can sit a little closer together now that I've trimmed off some of the end. So I'm gonna start with gluing down my middle leaf, which is my longest one. And the end of it is going to end up basically exactly in the center of the weaving. So I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and pushing that down into place. And then I'm gonna glue down these next two leaves. So for our little pom-poms, there's a couple different things you can do. You can keep the strands long and actually sew them into place, or you can go ahead and glue them on like we did the leaves. So I'm gonna start with the biggest pom-pom. I'm gonna opt for gluing since I'm already doing that anyway. So I'm gonna trim off my strings nice and short. I'm gonna put this berry right in the middle on that middle leaf. So I do want to cover up the top of my little leaf strings there. So I'm going to place the next one here and the last one over top of this, this leaf top. Okay, so now that I have my little berries and leaves finished, I'm going to finish up the weaving and then we can look at the final piece. All right, you guys, it's all done. So let's have a look at the final piece. This is such a fun, quick and easy project for Christmas. And if you like this video, check out this one next.